Do I? I'd like to call to order the open agenda meeting for September 19th, Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education. And uh, Mrs. Saradaki, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Brody? Here. Dr. Clancy? Here. Dr. Kulikowski? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Mrs. Suriani? Here. Mrs. Williams? Here. Mrs. Winkler? Here. Mrs. Cleary? Here. Mrs. Bauer? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you. Please join us in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The board just uh, met in executive session where we discussed uh, personnel issues, legal issues, and um, we also had a, a um, letter to the board. Um, and um, we published a notice of tonight's meeting to the borough clerk of Fanward, the uh, township clerk in Scotch Plains, the Times, and the Patch. Um, additions to the agenda. I think we had um, the LET and we also had um, a business item. Is that all? That's it. Okay. Um, so one, this is the first meeting since school starts. It got started, which is very exciting. And we get to see a little bit of a taste of the opening of school. Is that right, Dr. That's Hayes? Correct. We have a PowerPoint, so we will... Screen and Debbie Saradaki and Dr. Mass are going to join me in the presentation. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the opening of school presentation. As is our tradition, we always start with a PowerPoint at the beginning of the school year. Um, and this year, I'm happy to have Mrs. Saradaki and Dr. Mass assist me with this. So we welcome new administrators to our school district this year. We are thrilled to have with us Lisa Howard, who is our new world language supervisor, Wayne Millett, who is the supervisor of fine arts, and Mr. Peter Patuko, who is here tonight with us, who is our new director of community resources. Can I check the mic? Oh, there, oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I'll start again. Thank you. So sorry for that technical dis <laughs> difficulty. Uh, tonight, I am pleased to um, introduce our welcome, our PowerPoint presentation on the opening of school. Um, we were very pleased this summer to welcome three new administrators to our team. Lisa Howard, World Language Supervisor, Wayne Millett, Supervisor of Fine Arts, and Peter Patuco, who's here with us this evening, who is our Director of Human Resources. Uh, these wonderful administrators are helping us move forward in our district, and we are very pleased to have them as part of our team. 
In addition, though the pictures are very small, we have a bulletin board outside that shows the pictures of all of our new teachers that joined us this year. We have 39 new staff members who are teachers. Um, 30 of them are in tenure track positions and nine of them are serving us well in leave replacement positions. And we are thrilled to have them with us as well. Um, it's amazing how much work goes on in the summer in a school district. Many people say, oh, isn't that the downtime in a school district? Actually, summers are one of the most intensive times of the year. As we wrap up the old year and we begin planning for the new year, there is a lot of work that goes on. And this year, the work was organized in four key areas. We had curriculum updates and curriculum training that went on. We had professional development across many content areas. We have continual integration of technology uh, into our classrooms and into our planning. And in addition, we had facilities enhancements and upgrades. Uh, Dr. Mass takes the lead in the area of curriculum, professional development, and technology. Mrs. Saradaki takes the lead in terms of facilities. And so as we move to the next parts of the presentation, I'm going to invite them to share with you their reflections on the work that took place this summer. Dr. Mast. So we're just going to share some of the projects that we've been doing in curriculum and professional development and technology. So we received this opportunity to partner with the MET. It's going to begin at Park Middle School. We have a leadership team that is going to learn about opera and how it can enhance our curriculum. We also have 100 tickets to Opera HD, where we're go going to have, um, we're going to be inviting some of Park Middle School students to come. Our hope is that this partnership will continue over time and it will grow to Terrell Middle School and the high school. Um, today we had our first meeting about that and there is so much good energy. I almost wanted to try to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so in addition, we are gearing up and we have geared up for the new school year. Over the summer, supervisors and teachers worked on multiple things. We revisited the preschool creative curriculum training that is ongoing and we've updated a number of our proficiencies in counseling, language arts, mathematics, media literacy, science, and world languages. And we are also working on developing global competency assessments. And we have a specific project that we're working on in sixth grade around that, but it does go um, all the way to the high school. The summer professional development additional initiatives. The first was a group of um, teachers and administrators and a board member went to Princeton, New Jersey, where we were involved in a program called Educational Leaders as Scholars. And this was a program that helped us gain ideas on how to use the arts to integrate it into the New Jersey learning standards. And actually from that that trip to Princeton is how we were offered that wonderful opportunity with the, the Met this year. So that's going to be one of our first areas where we're integrating the arts. Um, additionally, we continue to have a growing number of teachers and administrators who are participating in the professional development of watercoloring. And though that might sound relaxing, it puts everyone at a level of disequilibrium where they feel very empathetic for students who are trying to learn something new. And the teacher who has been in the lead of that just had an article um, published in ASCD. So we're really proud of her and her work and um, we're really proud of that program. It's something very unique to us. Um, over at McGinn, we um, spearheaded a partnership where Teachers were learning more about coding themselves so they could turn key coding to their students. And we are exploring, way, exploring ways where we can intentionally in, integrate that into the curriculum. 
we had a workshop on foundations of the English language, and that really is, is reviewing the fundamental skills of learning how to read and decode. I took one of those sessions myself this summer, and it was so complicated. Like I, you know, having a background in, in mathematics, I thought that that was hard. Um, it's just so involved, and there's so much deep knowledge that teachers need to know and understand to, to help kids learn how to read. Um, we also had a digital photography course that was open to uh, our professional staff, and that was taught by um, the teacher who does the digital photography, and we continue to have workshops on the Google Classroom. So. All of that professional development was delivered by our own staff and our own teachers. So in August, the administrators come together for three days. And in this case, uh, you can see from the pictures that they did some, some drumming circles and they also did some image making. And the session started with the transformative power of creative thinking through arts and integration and innovation. So since we believe that the arts will enhance the learning for students, we really felt it was important for all of the administrators to experience that as well. And after we drum together, we have a new appreciation for hot cross buns. <laughs> so in addition to, to those things, the administration the administrators also looked at our evaluation process. We, we discussed our technology updates. We also are looking forward to the strategic planning and we spend some time thinking about that. We had an additional session that was run by teachers <coughs> where we explored diversity and developing empathy and we, we engaged in some difficult conversations in that area. And in addition, we um, were once again invited by Dr. Hayes to create our own theory of action and problem of practice. And if you want to know more about that, that would be a separate presentation. But it's certainly focusing on what we know we could do to, to focus our work to make things better for, for our students. And Summer, we also discussed all the initiatives that happened in the summer. We had a, another successful new teacher orientation. And again, we had our own teachers and supervisors who organized and delivered the content for the new teacher orientation. They looked at all of the elements of what we value in our teacher observation evaluation system. They learned about the technology, and all of the ins and outs to be successful here in the district. And every year we do some, some refreshing of technology and moving forward to support our infrastructure. So you can see that we, we added additional Chromebooks. We, we included additional iPads for new classes in, in kindergarten mainly, but at the elementary level. We upgraded and re-imaged all of the student MacBooks. We, we refreshed the student laptops, which just means we, we cleaned them up and brought the software up to date. We upgraded the network. We updated some of the programs that we use, such as PowerSchool. And we um, cleaned up our data center, where we brought in some new servers and switches and things like that. And the, there are two high school labs, and we, we upgraded, we brought new technology into those labs. Hi, I'm here to talk about the capital projects that we completed this summer. We're very proud to be able to complete these capital projects um, annually, pretty much. Uh, without having to go out for a bond issue, we'll get these done within the cap within the budget. So um, one thing we did was uh, an upgrade to the Park Middle Media Center, which you can see here on the left. 
uh, with new carpet, new bookshelves, and furniture. Um, and it's a much brighter. Last spring we had put in new LED lighting, and so it's a much more bright, welcoming environment for the students. Uh, we also, in evergreen, uh, painted the walls, um, put new uh, stage curtains in, and we got new um, in-the-wall cafeteria tables, which you can see there, um, to upgrade that room. We had two roof replacements, one at Brunner Elementary School and one at the high school. It was an extensive portion of the high school. Um, in addition to the roof replacement, we had a lot of masonry repair, masonry repair done along the roof lines, so um, which our buildings are in need of. So that took care of at least the upper level of the masonry repair that needs to be done. We did some repaving. You'll see here on the left the new drain in the high school parking lot where we used to have a lake. Um, and six spaces that people had to wear boots to get out of their car if it had rained. Um, school one's playground was done, as well as Cole's playground, and we did some drain work at Cole's also, so that parts of the property that were a problem for the school are draining well now. We also did work at Brunner. We put a new playground surface at Brunner and at Park Middle School in the front lot. It has now been resurfaced and all of the spots have been numbered and assigned and uh, it worked out very well at Park Middle School. All staff has a place to park and there are only five unassigned spots. So it's very close to exactly the number we needed. We put a new boiler in at Coles. You'll see that on the left. In the middle is um, one of the, what they call socks that ran through the Terrell Middle School cafeteria. At Terrell Middle School, we air conditioned the cafeteria and the second floor. Park Middle School, we did the first floor this past summer, so now Park Middle School is fully air conditioned. Um, and So as those projects came to a close, our students began to return, and they come back, a number of them come back very early in the summer, mid-August, they're all out there on the field. This is our marching band that is beginning to learn its routines um, as they practice. Um, and you see them here. Um, the flags um, are doing their, their, our color guard are doing their uh, practice for their presentations, and all of this led to our um, a, an exhibition for parents late in August. Um, and then last Saturday night, we had our home show for the band where they hosted 10 other bands from around the areas in competition and our band performed in exhibition. It was a beautiful night. Um, our students come back every summer um, to practice for the upcoming athletic season. So here you see the boys football, girls soccer, boys soccer, and girls field hockey out there getting ready for their new season as well. Um, in terms of enrollment, we are pretty steady from last year to this year. We have a slight uptake. We were at 55, 77 students as of October 14th last year. And as we open the school year this year, we're at 55, 86 students. So enrollment remains uh, pretty consistent over the last couple of years, um, and we certainly use all of our classroom spaces quite well. Um, so these are our happy children actually returning to school this September. Uh, each of our elementary schools is represented in this slide. We welcomed back our second class of full-day kindergarten students this year. Um, and we are eager to hear the updates from the first grade teachers as to how our new first graders are doing having completed their first year of full day kindergarten last year. Um, by all reports, the kids were happy to return. Um, we had very few criers and the school year got off to a great start. <laughs> Equally in the middle school, you see some of the students here who assembled for opening of school activities at our middle school level at Park and Terrell. 
Um, and here are some of our SGA leaders who led some of the opening activities for new students to the high school um, in September. Um, they did an orientation for the ninth graders early on. And of course, the Scotch Plains Fanwood High School now has a strong tradition of starting the year with an all school um, opening assembly that takes place outside um, at the students look forward to every year. So here you have Dr. Heisey welcoming all of the students, the Blue Diamond Step team performing, our cheerleaders and the Sensations Choir were just a few of the groups that came out to help get everyone in gear for the start of the new year. So that gets us off to a great start this year. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to any questions that the board members may have. So we'll return to our seats, um, and then we'll entertain any comments or questions. Okay, are there any questions or comments for the opening of school? Dr. Kulikowski. This was a beautiful PowerPoint presentation, great pictures. And I wonder who took the pictures of the roof. Was that you, Ann? <laughs> <laughs> climb up there and take those pictures. They were great. You could tell they were up there. Uh, but my real question is, um, what does re-imaged mean when you talked about um, improving the upgraded for technology? You put it, you install a new operating system. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes. And where was the location for the coding program? It was in the McGinn Media Center. Okay. I thought the chairs looked a little small. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions or comments from anyone? I was just wondering, Dr. If you, could, if you could tell us more about the, the uh, teacher who wrote the article, maybe we could see, uh, maybe, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that. So um, Barbara Prestridge wrote an article um, under Dr. Mass leadership and with Barbara's support. Um, over the last year, we've had a number of workshops for, um, for teachers and administrators in which, as we said, we used watercolor as a vehicle for teachers and administrators to connect with what is it like to learn something new again, um, just as we ask our students to do every day, right? We ask students to engage in new content, to understand new concepts, and over time, if you haven't put yourself in the role of a learner, you can forget how um, challenging that can be. So by taking staff out of their comfort zone and having them engage in an area in which they don't have expertise, uh, Dr. Mast has done this, I've done it, you put yourself in the role of a learner and suddenly you have to pay attention to all kinds of things. So if Ms. Prestridge gives the directions too quickly and you're falling behind, you suddenly realize, am I doing that to my students as I teach? Um, when she's asking you to open up and engage in using your creativity and you see people getting furtive glances over, well, how are you doing it? How are you doing it? Am I really on the right track? Um, all of those experiences build our empathy with what we're asking students to do on a daily basis. The art that you see around the room has been produced this summer in our opening workshop with the administrators as they experience that as a group. Um, Barbara has also integrated music into that, and so what we did was we listened to music to put ourselves into the zone of creativity. We looked at art as expression, and ultimately we connect that to writing. And that's been an ongoing workshop that we've done with students and with some of our writing workshop teachers. Um, they report that students' ability to use creative language has blossomed under that process. So Barbara was able to write a reflective article on the power of building empathy for teachers by putting them in this role of learners. And her article was published very prestigiously by uh, a publication that's called, um, it's through ASCD, the um, Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. 
um, and that is available, and we can share that article with you. Yeah, I would love to read it. That's wonderful. That's true. Thank you. Anyone else questions or comments about the opening of the year? Okay, thank you, Dr. Hayes. I, I have to say, and I think we were talking about the last meeting, that we were so impressed with both the amount of work that staff had done over the summer curriculum and, and that you were talking about, and also the facilities and how much work our, our um, staff had done. And I, I know we ask you to thank everyone because it, it is amazing. So our, our thanks go to our custodians and our maintenance workers, certainly all the teachers that supported the professional development over the summer. Personally, I want to thank Dr. Mast and Mrs. Sarah Dackey and Mr. P um, Tuco for their leadership in terms of making sure that our staff were onboarded and that they were well trained. And I wanted to give a shout out to Ann Oliveira for helping us create the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> it takes a team to get all of this work pulled together. Um, and certainly, um, you know, I get to share in the celebration as a superintendent, but, but it really, it, it gives evidence of how well we all come together as a team. Um, and the work has to be done that way because no one person can, can do it all. Definitely a team effort. Yes. Okay, so that brings us to the point in our agenda where we have opportunities uh, for the public to address the board according to policies 0164 and 0165. There'll be several opportunities. If you do come to the microphone, please give us your name, uh, the town in which you reside. You have a maximum of two minutes, and our board attorney will give you a 15-second Reminder that you're reaching the, nearing the end of your two minutes. Is there anyone? Oh. <laughs> All right. My name is Matt. Or I. You're okay. fine. Okay. <laughs> My name is Matthew Scholar. I, I live in Scotch Glen. Uh, I go to Scotch Glen Chamber High School. I'm a sophomore. Um, there, there was just something that like came to my attention the other day with like Raider Nation, and it was basically there was kind of a derogatory profile picture on their account. Basically, like I, I know like with like recently. There, there was like a logo change, and like the new logo is perfectly fine. But there's some people who still want to use our old logo, which was a derogatory logo. And I just wanted to ask the board what they think can be done about Raider Nation using these derogatory figures. Well, first of all, I want to say it's always great to have students come speak because um, we like, we hope that in the future you'll be in our seats, our, our students, so um, we appreciate your civic engagement. Um, and um, uh, I think it might be good to have Dr. Hayes give a little history. It was actually back in 2004 um, that the logo change took place, and she can give a little background information about that. Um, but as an aside, I want to mention that um, we got a small grant and we're in the process of looking at branding anyway uh, here in the district. And uh, so, but why don't we do a little history about the changing of the logo and the timing and so forth. Um, so this is also in connection with the letter to the um, board that was also received on this topic. And so the board is very aware of that letter. and. Um, we're, we're very appreciative of, of the expressions from the students that have been raised. So I have here a copy of the 2005 Coleman, and that does give a snapshot of when the change took place. It was back during the 2004-2005 school year, where um, there were concerns beyond just Scotch Plains Fanwood um, in many communities about uh, logos that depicted, for example, American Indians. And there were concerns that um, sports teams probably should not be using those kinds of logos because some could find them to be offensive. 
Um, and in <coughs> fact, um, the commissioner at the time, Bill Labrera, did direct school districts to take a look at what they were using. And Scotch Plains Fanwood High School did move forward with making a change. Um, in, as we always do when we look at something like that, we did encourage uh, participation from many facets of the community in that process. And so Dr. Heisey had a committee that met. It involved students. It involved members of the community. It involved staff. And from that process, there were um, a series of images that came to the forefront. There were five that were ultimately submitted, and the high school voted on the choice of a new logo. And the, new, the older logo was a stylized version of an Indian head, and the newer logo um, is the one that's depicted here. Um, that is still to this day our logo. We do know that over a period of time, though, it's hard to get that logo deeply embedded um, in the psyche of everybody as the logo that we should be supporting and using. And so sometimes there are people who have long histories with the district who do give evidence to bringing forward sort of the Indian motif again. Um, Dr. Heisey is working on that, but even prior to um, some students bringing this to our attention through the, what they were concerned about by a Raider Nation, we already were working uh, to have a committee look at the logo again. Because although this logo certainly is fine, if it is not really supported by the students, then the get buy-in is difficult to achieve. And so it may be time to look at the logo again. And as, as Mrs. Bauer said, Mr. Miller was uh, successful in getting a grant that would help us in the rebranding process should we go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And that work is underway right now. There were some efforts last spring to look at a variety of logos. We've not yet come to a conclusion as to what a new one should look like if we go in that direction. So the comments that have been raised have been timely and we're addressing it, and we hope to have it resolved within the next couple of months. It takes a little bit of time, though, to get that level of consensus. Thank you. Okay, Thank you're you. welcome. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board? Seeing no one, we're going to move on to committee reports. I know we have some committee reports. So, who would like to go. <laughs> um, I could I could talk about the meeting at um, Union Union County School Boards Association last week that several of us attended. Um, and it was a forum for updating on um, things going on around the, the state. We learned more about our our annual school boards conference coming up in October and 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 also among other things that the the uh, school boards association is going to be interviewing both of the gubernatorial candidates asking them about about educational issues and that will be av available online um, and school board s school board huh, I, I'll 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 tell you what it is so you can look it up but the, you can actually access all their in information there and um, then we had a, a, a presentation by um, uh, three different superintendents talking about different ways to uh, communicate with the uh, public and that, in, that in, in included students, parents, community members and press. Um, so we learned um, a lot from that which we, um, which I wrote a brief report on and I think I I think I've covered most of what was there, and um, we also talked about um, ongoing legislation um, in the state, and that in the uh, in the opinion of the presenters, not a whole lot was going to happen this this fall with the lame duck session. Um, but I, uh, but there were a, a couple of things that had happened over the summer. They updated us on those, but nothing is coming to us yet. Um, and it was a very helpful meeting. There, uh, what happens at the school board's meetings is there are as as many people 
who want to come from, this is Union County, um, it come from the Union County um, uh, districts, and you can learn a lot. So I think those of us that were there learned a lot, and hopefully we, and not hopefully, we will bring it back to our work as uh, board members. Thank you. And just as an aside, I want to mention that convention uh, that all board members are required, I don't know if the public knows this, to have training and regular training and um, depending upon what year of service you are, there's different kinds of training that's required um, related to finance, governance, um, all kinds of things and, and some of those required trainings are some of the things that happen at the um, the school board's workshop as well. Was there anyone else who was reporting? Not for that. Okay. I beg your pardon? I have another one, but not for that one. Oh, okay. Dr. Kulikowski. Um, I went to the Municipal Alliance Committee meeting on Wednesday, September 13th, and this was the first general meeting of the year. Uh, they had discussed the August 1st uh, night out that they had run. They had given bags out in both Scotch Plains and Fanwood locations, the freshman orientation at the high school. September 6th, they gave out the student uh, guidebook and handbooks. September 26th is going to be the safety bug behind St. Bart's for the seniors. Um, October 11th, there's going to be a project graduation meeting at the high school. Um, the numbers have been down for attendance and they're just trying to wonder what happened. And uh, the committee is complaining that they don't have funds to run this and they need to do some kind of fundraising events. Um, Matt Mercurio <coughs> was talking about the freshman orientation. He sent that well, very well, especially the dunk tank. He said that was a, a big draw. And Kathy Sheilas was uh, discussing the bulbs that they gave out to the schools last year for the Think Purple Week. And that it was very good, but it was deer candy. <laughs> and that they're looking to get um, a different type of bulb for next time, but they want to continue it because they thought that went well. Um, they're also thinking about, um, have, they are having the uh, Sergeant McMahon from Union County, or Special Agent McMahon, excuse me. They're going to have it hidden in plain sight, and that is going to be uh, held over at the high school, I believe. And they were just waiting to fine-tune the details. But that's going to be a program uh, for adults, not for the students, about um, looking for things that may be hidden in your student's room that may not be a good thing so that you can look out for them. Uh, they are having another meeting coming up, the uh, Executive Board's meeting October 8th, and then two more general meetings March 7th and May 30th for this committee. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I just want to mention as an aside, I know uh, we're going to talk about dates, but we have our strategic planning sessions coming up. And I think for any of our groups that we're on that uh, we're, we're working with community <coughs> members, we want to remind them. We hope students will be there. Um, certainly we hope our staff, just members from the community. And um, it's on, it, I, it is on our website. Um, the first one, October 3rd, then October 16th, and November 2nd. So they're a series of three. Uh, you don't have to come to all of them, but you can come to all of them. Uh, and uh, everyone's input is really important because the board really relies on the strategic plan to make decisions about curriculum and funding and so forth. Um, and uh, many of the initiatives that... Um, Dr. Hayes and uh, the staff were referring to like full day kindergarten grew out of input from the community, a study that was done and, and ultimately full day kindergarten, but uh, implementing Chinese and a number of things have come from uh, these strategic planning conversations. And I'll give a special plug for the third because Dr. Hayes does a state of the state uh, which is an overview, and that's really helpful because it looks at everything related to the school, so Absolutely. all at one time. And uh, that is very helpful for the conversations that we then have. So um, everybody can spread the word. Um, 
And that brings us to the superintendent's report, Dr. Hayes. Thank you, Mrs. Bauer. Uh, tonight, I would ask that the board approve the out-of-district placements that are listed on the agenda. Um, one is uh, a revision to the extended school year, uh, and the other one is related to um, an additional um, full year school placement uh, for the 17-18 school year. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'm going to need to check. Hold on. Um, I have uh, an update to give you regarding um, graduation information. Yes. What? We're voting on that next week. We're, we're voting on that next week, so I will um, present that to you at the next meeting. Um, 3S, tonight I would ask approval for the field trip approvals um, that are listed on the agenda. The high school ad advanced placement environmental science classes will be traveling to the Great Swamp National Refuge, the Hawk Rise Sanctuary in Linden, um, the Ernest L. Oros Wildlife Preserve in Avenel, the Rawway Valley Sewerage Authority in Rawway, South Mountain Reservation in West Orange, and the Fanwood Nature Center in Fanwood. These six visits are interspersed throughout the course of the school year and are related to the various curriculum topics. In addition, the two traditional end-of-year eighth grade trips for park and <coughs> middle school are listed on the agenda for approval this evening. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, and then I would ask that the board approve the person uh, the personnel agenda as discussed in exec this evening. I'll move. Okay. Mrs. Saradaki, would you please call the roll? Yes. Dr. Kulikowski? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mrs. Brody? Yes. Dr. Clancy? Yes. Mrs. Suriani? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Winkler? Yes. Mrs. Cleary? Yes. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. So that brings us to the business functions. Mrs. Saradaki. Yes. Um, the first item I would like the board to vote on this evening is 1BUS, and that's the approval of staff training on the uh, report from the superintendent dated September 19, 2017. So Second. Are there, I'm sorry, who was the second? I was the second. Are there any comments or questions about the staff training? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? To BUS, I'd like the board, this will be for next week, to acknowledge the receipt of the disbursement listings for the month of September 2017. Three BUS for next week um, is the board acknowledging receipt of the school district security and fire drill reports for the summer of 2017. For BUS, I'd like the board to vote on, and there is also an addition to the agenda on this item. It's related service vendors. Um, they'll be from Union County Ed Services, $2,640 for home instruction, and uh, creative speech for speech services of $742.50. Second. Any comments or questions? So the uh, the addition was for BUS. That was my yes. Okay. Instead of three. Uh, okay. Oh, I didn't see the been. speech services. Where it's three. Oh. Yes, that should have been a four. Uh, additions. 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 Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, it just was. I see. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. 5 BUS will be asking for the board to approve disposal of the following items. Uh, we grouped this into two lots, the first lot being primarily MacBooks and the second lot being <coughs> Chromebooks um, due to the age of these units. And uh, we received one bid for lot one. We had asked for a minimum of 18500 We received a bid for 21600 And we asked for uh, Lot two, we asked for a minimum bid of $1,000, and we received bids ranging from $1,477.98 to the top bid was $6,770, which wow. 
I'd like to get the board's approval for <laughs> how quick can we that say yes next to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I put it on for next week. Um, six BUS, I'd like the board's approval on this evening, uh, if possible. Uh, Union County Ed Services Agreement for Non Public Security Aid Program. This is very similar to the ones you approved last June regarding uh, non public textbooks and non public nursing services. Uh, it's just that the state hadn't decided till late whether they were going to be giving non-public security aid, and so that's why we're seeing it on the agenda now. Okay. Are you gr you're grouping? Uh, that's the last one, I think. The, no, seven. Oh, okay. Seven five we're, five we're voting week. on next week, though, despite our sense. conversation about voting as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So... Um, so are you six. grouping six and seven, or we're just doing six? Just doing seven six. We're seven we're going to hold for one week so that the okay. board has time to discuss it in exact. Do you need a move? So move. Just six. For six. So second. Thank you. Any comments or questions about number six? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? 7BUS will be asking for approval next week of a settlement agreement on special education costs for a student. This um, is a placement at Banyan School and includes a reimbursement. We would be paying the cost for Banyan School tuition and reimbursing uh, a small amount for the cost of tuition, uh, transportation, I'm sorry. 8BUS, I'll be asking the board to acknowledge receipt of the board secretary reports, the treasurer of school fund reports, and the budget adjustments for the month of August 2017. And 9BUS, I'll be asking for the board to approve the bill list that you'll be receiving uh, with the next board agenda for the period August 29th through September 22nd, 2017. Okay. Thank and you very I'm going to go back. Okay. Okay. Yes. So um, I just want to go back to 2S for a moment under the superintendent's report. Although you will be voting next week, I do want to give you the information relative to that this evening. So each year the superintendent is asked to validate the graduation verification for the class from the preceding year. Um, and this year we had a total number of 383 students who graduated from our high school. According to statute, we need to identify the number of students who graduated um, having passed PARC using the PARC process. And so 323 general ed students uh, completed the graduation requirements through PARC. Um, and, um, three, and 52 special education students completed it for a total of 375 out of the 383. The total number of students who graduated using a portfolio process, which is the alternative to PARC, was eight. Five of them were in general ed and three were in special ed. And the number of students who received a state-endorsed high school diploma as a result of meeting any alternative requirements as specified by their IEPs was 24. Um, we had 24 in special ed with PARC and 21 in special ed with a portfolio appeal. And the total number of students who were denied graduation from that class were three. There were three 12th graders who did not graduate. And the number of students who were denied graduation solely because of a failure to pass PARC was zero. So we're very pleased with those outcomes with the class of 2017. Um, and we wish all 383 of our graduates good luck um, as they move on to their future <coughs> endeavors. So next week, uh, we will have this asterisk and you will simply be voting to acknowledge the receipt of that report. And if anyone has any questions about it in the meantime, please contact me. Okay. So are, does that mean you're emailing that to us as well? We can, yes. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Hayes, and thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. And that brings us to board policies. Mrs. Right. Winkler. Uh, this evening, I'd like to move that the board approve the second reading of uh, the following board policies. Policy 2700, services to non-public school students. Uh, policies and regulations 3221, evaluation of teachers. Policies and regulations 3221. 
review evaluation of teaching staff members, excluding teachers and administrators, policy and regulations, 3223, evaluation of administrators, excluding principals, vice principals, and assistant principals, policy and regulations, 3224, evaluation of principals, vice principals, and assistant principals, policy and regulation, 5530, substance abuse, policy and regulation 7100 long range facilities planning, policy and regulation 7101 educational adequacy and capital projects, policy 7102 site selection and acquisition, regulation 7102 for site selection and acquisition, uh, this is new. Um, policy 7130 school closing, Policy 7300, disposition of property. Regulation 7300.1, disposition of instructional property is being abolished. Regulation 7300.2, disposition of land. Regulation 7300.3, disposition of personal property. And regulation 7300.4, disposition of federal property. Um, and as we said at the last meeting, are changes that are predominantly prompted by changes to the state um, the state codes. So. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and does anyone have any new board business? Want to bring up? Um, other board business requests to attend workshops or workshop reports. Okay, um, we will be um, um, voting on the, um, I guess we'll be voting on the merit goals. We hope to, next week we hope to mm -hmm. have uh, hear back from the county we superintendent. Oh, we did. We have heard. He has approved. Oh, well, that's oh. great news. Okay, good. Okay, and uh, next week we'll also be doing the resolutions. So if you can look those over, if you would like to read those uh, next week, we have several of them. Um, and um, that brings us to the approval of the minutes. Next week. Next week. Oh, yes, next week. So we have one more opportunity for the public, according to policy 0164, 0165. Um, again, uh, if you decide to come to the microphone, we need your name, the town in which you reside, and there's a maximum of two minutes. And the board attorney will give you a heads up when you have 15 seconds remaining. Okay, seeing no one, that brings us to the good of the order. Does anyone have anything for the good of the order? I, I would just like to say um, thank you for coming out and bringing your concerns to our attention. Um, we take them very seriously, and I know it's difficult to um, stand up at a microphone and, and do that whole process, but we really appreciate that you took the time because it's so important. Um, and if you are free or your friends are free, please encourage them to consider coming out for strategic planning. We really um, devote a lot of time basically for the students in the district, and we can't do that well if we don't get the voice back from the students. So um, thank you so much. It wasn't an easy thing to do tonight, and I recognize you both for doing so. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Anyone else for the good of the order? Uh, I, I was at our um, board retreat this weekend, yes. on Saturday morning in this room, and I thought we had some good conversation. Missed the few people that weren't here, but I thought it went well, and I appreciated the least time being there. I thought we got a lot done. And, and I should mention that um, the, one of the main reasons we have the retreat every year is even though we're not required to, we do a board evaluation of ourselves uh, as a board of, uh, of the whole and also of us individually and uh, ways that we think we could improve individually and collectively. So that was the basis of the conversation and it was a good conversation. I'm well spent. Yes, time well spent on a Saturday. 
So, Dr. Hayes. I, I just wanted to, again, um, comment on how wonderfully I think the band home show went last Saturday night. Um, it only sprinkled a little bit from time to time, <laughs> so the rain held off, and uh, it, it was a wonderful evening to showcase the talents of many of the bands in the neighboring areas. It was, it was quite an evening. Yes, and Mr. I, Murray. I just want to, um, for those who don't know, I think Saturday is senior day at the, for yes. the football team. Uh, the first home game uh, against Immaculata at 1 o'clock, and uh, you'll see some crying parents, I guess, as uh, the senior uh, yeah. football players present them with some stuff. So I think that, you know, the support, I had a conversation with Mr. <clears throat> Miller on uh, Friday night, and um, he's encouraging, you know, to get the board as actively in front of the students as possible to, so that they know who we are and, um, you know, encouraging them to participate in, you know, things like this. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we will see you soon. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night.